and welcome back to my channel. Um, obviously I have a little guest. I love you. Today's video is a studio tour. This is where I do most of my practicing. This is also where I teach. Um, so I hope it gives you some good ideas for how to maximize your space. If you're a teacher, this is quite a small room um, and I have to fit quite a large instrument into it. Uh, so there are some ideas for soundproofing and just how I manage to fit everything that I need into this one area of my home. Um, if you're a student, this is a good chance for you to see what you'd be working with if you decided to take lessons with me. Um, if you are interested in lessons, this is my website. Uh, check it out and I'd be happy to connect with you. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm starting in the entryway, which is the first thing when you see. Uh, I do ask that students take off their shoes just because um, the pedals tend to wear out a little bit faster if everybody's playing with their shoes on. Um, this is my entryway, and this is where I keep, you know, for now at least, uh, during COVID, I have hand sanitizer, I have an infrared um, temperature gun so that I can check temperatures before lessons, before you enter the home. Um, on this side of the wall, I have this bookcase. I believe this is from Ikea. It's the Billy bookcase. And it is deceptively roomy. So it doesn't look to be quite that big, but it fits everything that I need and then some. So all of these scores used to go in one of those uh, four cubby drawers and I was actually looking into buying a second one because they had filled it all up but as you can see they barely even fill two shelves <laughs> here so I have scores uh, diplomas that I never got around to framing uh, musical books and novels here for the most part obviously you know some of these are not and then down here I have the majority of the method books that I tend to gravitate towards. Obviously, I have a lot more of these in bulk for my students to take with them, uh, but here you just have your basic, you know, Thompson, Faber, Hannon, uh, Fisher, Bastian, all of that good stuff. So just for easy access, I can just kind of stop a lesson and pause and come over here and grab another book if I need to. Uh, these are materials for some of my younger students. So I have, you know, flashcards, stickers. I, I made these, so they're kind of like laminated um, templates that you can draw on with dry erase. So you can kind of have students compose um, and fix things and just kind of this is good for theory. And then down here are textbooks. Uh, to the left, I have my old keyboard. This instrument has been with me for so long. Um, it is the Kawaii ES3. It's one of their old models. I think I've had this for at least over a decade. Um, but I keep it around because it makes for a really good MIDI keyboard. So if I'm arranging something, if I'm composing, I think right now I'm working on something for YouTube, uh, like a video game medley. So it's good for that because it plugs directly into my computer and I can use it to compose rather than writing out each individual note by hand. Because he doesn't come with a stand, I can just kind of tuck him away in my car and drive him to places and set him up so easily. This stand collapses, this bench collapses, and what I love about it is that it has both pedals. So the left and right pedal, which I don't know if the uh, Yamaha P125 still doesn't have a left pedal yet, but from what I remember when I was looking at them a while back, they only had the right pedal. So, oh, and that's one of my cat's toys that somehow made it over here. This is a tripod for your phone. So your phone just kind of clips in here. Um, and a lot of students learn best when they're able to film their lessons, uh, whether that's like a voice memo or a actual video of their lesson. So I like to have that there so that students can film themselves and not have to worry so much about taking notes when they can just literally just rewatch their video. This 
is the main studio area. As you can see, my piano is closed right now. Um, this is the almost concert grand, I believe they advertise it as. It's a Highland, which I think is such an underrated uh, piano. It's seven foot two inches, and as you can see, it's quite a large instrument. And because it is so large, I have had to soundproof this room just a little bit. So as you can see, I have hardwood floors, so the sound just kind of goes all over the place. So this really helps. What I did was I stretched a curtain rod across this entire wall, and then I bought these soundproof, lightproof velvet curtains, and they soak up so much sound. And because they are velvet, when I record anything, or if I have to record things for my students, and you know, I'm right here, and I have it kind of zoomed in, so that you can kind of just see the hands and the student. It almost looks like a stage because of the background. And the good thing about this is because it is a curtain, I can change it out. So say someone wants a red curtain for their uh, recording, or say a student wants something more gauzy with like twinkle lights in the background, I'm able to kind of accommodate their creative vision a little bit better than if this was just, you know, a flat wall or a piece of art or a mirror on the wall. This is my chair that I teach out of, and then of course you have the artist bench for students. And I have this very sturdy, like I think it's iron, um, pedal extender for my younger students who can't quite reach the pedals. This one is so awesome just because it isn't one of those traditional box structures which puts a lot of pressure on this. So this just stands on its own and because it is so heavy, you're not going to move this at all when you're pedaling. And it has a fully adjustable base and it's just served me so well. I love this thing. Here I obviously have disinfecting wipes um, to kind of, you know, in between students, make sure that things are staying clean. And then here, just for now, I came out of a Zoom lesson right before this, so I have this gooseneck clamp, which is what I use uh, to clip my phone in so that you can get kind of a bird's eye view of the keyboard, which sometimes is necessary just for demonstrative purposes. And then my Bluetooth headphones. Um, Zoom lessons work so much better if you are on a pair of headphones. I have more soundproofing. There's more soundproofing behind the curtains as well. Eventually I might wanna do the whole wall for curtains, but for right now, this is this is totally fine. Um, these are some really, really high quality soundproofing panels and they've cut down the sound in this room by about 30%, just the few of them that are up there that you see. So really recommend those. On this wall, I have this lithograph that I got from my mom as a going away present when I first moved out here. Uh, as you can see, it's just a Gershwin print and it's something that's really near and dear to my heart came out in 95, which is my birth year, and it's one of only a thousand original prints to be made. And also, as you can see, it's Ira and George Gershwin, who are a very famous musical set of brothers, and seeing as my sister and I are both musicians, I just, I, I was very drawn to this artwork, and I'm so glad that my mom parted with it. Okay, so this is one of my umbrella lights. It's in a set of two. The other one is being used currently in a different room. Um, so this is good for lighting just in terms of videos. It gives a really awesome, like, ambient light. Uh, obviously, if you're doing anything super close up, a ring light would be better, but for my purposes at the keyboard, I think that this is one of the best purchases ever. I have my guitar here. Um, super out of two. <laughs> this corner is kind of like a refreshment corner. I have a bar cart here with a Keurig and K-Cups. Uh, a couple of them are missing. Obviously, during COVID times, uh, this is not really in use. I still offer, you know, waters um, for anybody who wants in. Obviously, you can take a coffee to go, but uh, just for safety, I don't really encourage this. But 
during normal times, I think that this is something that parents can take advantage of if they have to wait for their kids' lessons to be finished. And then here I have this music stand. I really love this music stand. It is so hefty. It is a really heavy uh, music stand. And it folds up entirely into kind of like a briefcase bag so you can take it on the go. I've never seen one that was so portable but also so durable. I love this. This keeps it from, you know, all the scores from flipping. So I use this mostly with my students for sight singing and any aural training that, you know, they have to be turned away from the piano to do. So this is great for that. This is hands down the ugliest part of the studio. It's just an industrial sized air conditioner. Uh, really necessary because even though California isn't super humid, it's still humid enough that the piano would fluctuate, especially in a place with no central air. So this kind of keeps the humidity in check, but it's not the prettiest thing to look at, as you can see with this like a plastic hosing that leads outside. So this kind of prevented me from hanging up any curtains. So I kind of have to improvise. I ended up getting this macrame wall decoration. Um, so this was obviously meant just to go, you know, behind your TV or as a headboard or something. Uh, but I zip tied, I don't know if you can tell, I actually zip tied it to a curtain rod and just called it a day. So now because it's not a solid piece of cloth, it still lets light in and it doesn't get in the way of the air conditioner, but it still frames the window. So in this corner, I just have a place for parents to sit or anybody who wants to sit in on lessons. Um, place to put your coffee. I have my business cards here, if it'll focus. Yeah, right there. And then this mic is awesome. I use it for voiceovers in my YouTube videos or um, for Zoom lessons. It's just a plug and play, super, super easy. Um, and then this is the camera that I use for most of my YouTube videos. Obviously I have my vlogging camera that I'm recording this on, but this is the one of the Canon EOS's and it serves my purposes so well. You can just plug in a mic here if you want a little bit better sound quality or sync up external audio like from this or I have another Zoom H6 that I like to record on for music things. Um, and then obviously the chair. And this wall is kind of like my pride and joy. I put together this wall because I do film some sit down things for my YouTube channel and it, it gets to be a pain if you have to um, kind of like figure out where you're going to sit and what's in your background. So this is just a few floating shelves um, and then some really just inexpensive bulk plants. So this came in a huge bundle for weddings and I cut it apart and kind of arranged it myself. It makes for a really good accent wall and also a good place to film videos. And then last but not least, I have this piece of artwork as well. This just reminds me of some of the more abstract or maybe programmatic music. It it's kind of surreal, but like dreamy. I really like it. It's a print from my best friend as a housewarming gift. Uh, so shout out to her if she's watching. Obviously all of the art in this uh, room is very special to me. Oh, and speaking of art, there's these two right above the coffee. So this one is uh, from when I was a judge at like the junior Steinway piano competition. Um, which was very fun because it was the first time that I had actually judged such a large competition and it was fun to get to be kind of behind the judging table instead of in front of it. And then this one is also very special to me. It's also from a friend. Uh, so my childhood piano was a Siebestein. Um, and so I will always be very, very fond of that. Uh, brand of piano and so this was a birthday gift and that's it 
Thank you so much for watching. If you liked today's video, please subscribe, comment, like, all of those good things. Uh, make sure to turn on that notification bell for new videos, and I will see you next time.